I did. I sang, well, actually, it wasn't an album. It was a little record that um, um, this lady asked my dad if I would be the, the, I guess, like the little angel from a story that she was narrating for children. And the name of the song was Goodwill the Christmas Spirit. And um, I had very few teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of lisping going on, and it's the sweetest little record. It really is. But that was my debut. Yeah. Well, yeah. of course, y y your dad produced one of the definitive Christmas songs of all time, really, yes, didn't he? Yes, he did. And, and everyone says it's not Christmas until you hear the Christmas song. And the other uh, thing about Christmas for you is that mm. um, you've you made a couple of albums, Christmas albums of your own. Yes. So it's, it's obviously quite an important time for you, isn't well, it? Well, and one with the London Symphony, which was just an amazing experience. But, um, yeah, I, well, Christmas, I think, for so many of us is always special because that's when we're all at least under one roof. <laughs> you know, we all try to be together as, as a family. And for us, that was... Um, one holiday that dad would always make an effort to just be there mm. you know we were all together and it was uh it was something we all looked forward to in our home christmas was you know kind of a big deal and um, we were very fortunate growing up to have uh, great um, parties good food <laughs> really good food and i loved it because there was candy all over the house so wow. That's how I got my nickname, which is Sweetie. But you were raised in the Hancock Park district of Los Angeles, so right. uh, you really didn't get much snow at Christmas. But uh, Oh, no. But we saw <laughs> snow. The first time I ever saw snow was um, with my dad and my family, and we were in Syracuse, New York, and it was Thanksgiving. Mm. And that was amazing. I mean, I remember we, were, we actually stayed in someone's home, and we were in our, our little bedroom, my sister and I. We had the windows wide open. It was like 20 below and we're like eating the snow off the windowsill because we just never seen it before. As a child, obviously you had an opportunity to hear all sorts of music, but you regularly went to Capitol Studios with your dad and uh, bumped into all sorts of famous names, many of whom influenced you, Ella yeah. Fitzgerald particularly, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, she was, she was a great influence and I started doing her stuff really back on my, I believe, my third... Oh, now I can't even remember. Don't make me go back there. But <laughs> trying to remember the years. But there's a song that I did called Stairway to the Stars. Mm -hmm. And it was, I believe, the first Ella Fitzgerald record that I ever tried to <laughs> uh, record. And um, I, I, I've been hooked on Ella from, from almost the very beginning since I, since I heard her. And then she was friendly with me even after, as I was growing up, my dad had been long gone. And um, she loved my father. She really did. I, I heard. Um, tell me if this is wrong. I heard that even as, as a child, um, your dad bought you a, a tape recorder and you used to tape yourself singing Ella Fitzgerald songs. Is that true? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, um, I did tape my voice and I would make up little poems and I, or, and I had a book of poetry that had been given to me and I would sing into the tape recorder and, and put little melodies to this poetry. But the, the first song that my father ever heard me sing was actually an Ella Fitzgerald tune, at least the first jazz song, and it was Tisk the Tasket. I didn't, I didn't have the nerve to put that on tape. I just wanted him to hear me.